the charming kangaroo, the cuddly koala, the beautiful butterfly, the cheerful clownfish, or the endearing budgerigar. Which is the cutest of them all? The warm tropical waters of the world's oceans are home to a dazzling array of beautiful marine life. In the shallow waters live stationary animals that look more like plants with their long waving tentacles. They are home to some of the most famous and most brightly colored of all the fish in the sea. Clown anemone fish live their lives in the safe confines of a single anemone, dancing through its tentacles, their bright colors flashing in and out. There are 28 different species of anemone fish with different shades of orange, yellow, red, and even black. Most also have white stripes or patches along their bodies. Before taking up residence in their chosen anemone, these jolly looking ocean dwellers perform an elaborate dance with their new host, gently touching its tentacles until they are accustomed to it. Clownfish are one of the very few fish lucky enough to have this relationship with an anemone. For many other animals, these tentacles can spell danger. Anemones are in the same group of animals as jellyfish and have powerful stinging cells, but they do not harm their resident clownfish which are covered in a layer of mucus that protects them from the anemone's otherwise lethal sting. Both partners get something out of the relationship. Protected from predators and supplied with a safe place to live, the little clownfish keeps the anemone clean. Not much more than 10 centimeters long, these adorable little fish would make a great snack to a moray eel. These prehistoric looking fish stay in crevices and holes and like to ambush unsuspecting passers-by. Clownfish are homebodies and don't stray too far or too long from the safety of their stinging residents. Outside of its protection, it's not just eels, but also sharks, stingrays, and bigger fish that may try to eat it. They are so protective of their beautiful living home that these feisty little fish will see off unwanted visitors to the anemone. Although other fish have many places to hide, what is extra special about the relationship between the clownfish and its anemone is that they actually eat leftovers of each other's food. As fish and plankton waft over this undulating carpet anemone, both it and the clownfish that live in it can feast on the bounties the water brings. The oceans abound with delicate, and beautiful creatures like these tiny transparent glass shrimp. But no matter how pretty, few can compete with the big-eyed, fast-finned, happy-looking clownfish. These dazzling little balls of bright orange must surely be some of the cutest creatures in the sea.
across Australia, thousands upon thousands of kangaroos bound over the countryside. Their superpower legs are born to hop. Leaping through the outback, these furry marsupials can speed along at over 60 kilometers an hour, and they start practicing as soon as they're out of the pouch. The iconic kangaroo is so well loved throughout Australia, it has become a symbol of the country and is seen on coins, on the coat of arms, on car stickers, and on countless road signs. With their alert and inquisitive faces, the endearing kangaroo's curiosity is never satisfied, and they're seemingly always on the lookout for something. And none more curious than the joey taking his first glimpses of the outside world. Kangaroos are gentle and caring mothers. While she feeds and cares for one joey that is now at her feet, she will have another smaller developing joey in her pouch. Both her young will be fed on separate formulas of milk. Both these bilks will change composition for each of her joeys as they grow and their needs change. From the safety of his mother's pouch, this joey will take his first nibbles of grass. Kangaroos don't tend to spend much time alone. Instead, family groups come together to form much larger mobs. Each family group will be made up of a dominant male and several females and their young. As they bound along, the mothers in the group will pull their pouches tightly towards themselves, keeping their joeys secure inside. The beautiful bounding leap of a kangaroo can cover over nine meters at a time as its spring-loaded legs propel it forward, its strong and graceful tail used for steering, stability, and balance. Like all young animals, kangaroos need to practice the skills of adulthood. Although sometimes, entering into the outside world seems to be done with much caution. When the time comes, adult males box, raking their opponent's heads and chest with sharp claws. They kick out with hind legs that have been growing stronger and stronger since the day they were born. Their tails are so strong that they can support their entire bodies as powerful hind legs kick, and forearms seem to both lash out and hold on at the same time. It seems like no matter who is doing the fighting, boxing is a spectator sport. These acrobatic displays of strength will decide on the hierarchy and dominance of the males. Claws are not always used for fighting. Oftentimes, they're much better suited to scratching an annoying itch, although some do that a lot faster than others. The sharp claws can be so gentle as the peaceful kangaroos tend to each other. These furry, family-oriented, affectionate creatures that grace the Australian bush are undoubtedly the most endearing of the outback. The stunning monarch butterfly that fills the sky 
are some of the most beautiful and delicate of all the world's insects. These small winged wonders migrate over 4,000 kilometers to and from their hibernation sites. Incredibly, no single butterfly goes each way, but somehow the same routes are traveled year after year. Millions of monarch butterflies take to the skies every autumn and fly from the cooler parts of North America to the warmer climates of Mexico and California, where they can survive the winter. They are the only butterflies known to make such a massive journey. Adult monarchs feed purely on liquid and select their favorite nectars from a variety of plants. The life of these exquisite butterflies is complex and dazzling and happens in a number of stages. Tiny eggs are laid exclusively on milkweed plants, lined with a waxy layer to stop it from drying out and surrounded by a protective shell. After only four days, the tiny larvae creep out. These minute caterpillars have got just one mission, to eat as much as they can. Eating the egg case from which they have just emerged, they begin to munch and munch and munch and will eat nothing but milkweed. The organic compounds in the milkweed plants that these hungry larvae eat will remain with them and make the adult butterflies foul tasting and poisonous to predators. Growing daily, they become more and more colorful until at their full five centimeters, they are a dazzling bright yellow, white and black eating machine. Creepy caterpillars need to store up enough energy to get them through the next phase of life, during which they will not eat. Able to grow no more, the caterpillar attaches to a stem by a silk pad. It creates a hard protective case around itself and turns into a vibrantly colored chrysalis. Inside here, one of nature's greatest wonders takes place as the hidden caterpillar undergoes its metamorphosis into a fully formed butterfly. On the morning it emerges, the butterfly will hang from its split chrysalis for several hours until it is sure its wings are completely dry. Crinkled from having been cramped inside the chrysalis, the butterfly pumps fluid into its magnificent wings until they are full and strong enough for it to spread them and fly off to feed on the flowers of its new world. The veins that pattern the deep orange and white wings are darker on the slightly smaller females, while the males have a black dot in the middle of each of their rear wings. Tiny coiled proboscis unravel to suck up the sweet nectar that they will feast on for the remainder of their lives. Most monarchs will only live as adults for a few weeks and die after laying eggs for the next generation. In one year, 
there will be four generations of these, the prettiest of butterflies. But only one of these generations will make the incredible migrations that they are known for. The great-grandchildren of the last generation will themselves prepare for the greatest flight of the butterfly world. With their graceful, delicate, and spectacular lives, these are by far the most captivating of insects. Wild budgerigars, or budgies, are social nomadic little parrots that come together in their hundreds to fly in lively, undulating flocks. Despite living in the dry landscapes of Australia, budgies have a preference for drinking and bathing every day, and are usually found not too far from the water. Male and female budgies differ from the color of their sere, the area at the base of their beak. In males, this is bright blue, while in females, it is a pale brown. With their sturdy beaks and thick, flexible tongues, they get all the energy they need from the grass seeds they forage for in the mornings. The males of these monogamous couples court their females by nudging her beak and by bobbing their heads towards her sometimes offering food. It is the female budgie that will incubate the small white eggs she has laid. Concentrating on keeping her eggs safe and warm, her partner will bring her food during the three weeks it will take before their eggs hatch. Featherless, blind, and unable to even lift their heads, these newly hatched chicks are utterly helpless. There may be different sized chicks inside the nest as budgies lay their eggs at different times. There can be as much as two weeks difference between the first and the last chick to hatch. By two weeks old, down is starting to be covered by feather and the males have joined the females in helping to keep the hungry and fast-growing chicks fed. By the time they are 30 days old, these young birds will start to stretch out their wings and strengthen them. Although they are starting to look like adults, their parents will continue to feed and protect them for some time. When their wings are strong enough, usually at just five to six weeks old, they will take their first flight. Budgies have survived in the harsh beauty of Australia for the last five million years. Highly social birds, their early mornings are spent preening and singing and moving within trees before they fly off for their foraging area to feed throughout the day. In these densely packed, fast-wheeling flocks can be tens of thousands of these pretty petite little parrots as they swarm and swoop over the beckoning water holes. Surely, these are some of the prettiest of all birds. The adorable, soft-furred, cuddly koala is one of the world's most well-loved little creatures and one of Australia's favorite residents. 
Among the eucalypt forests and woodlands of Eastern Australia, these enigmatic little animals spend most of their lives in trees. Not actually a bear at all, the koala is a marsupial, and like other marsupials, the females carry their young in a pouch for the first few months of life. Like kangaroos, young koalas are also called joeys. By the time this joey is just over six months old, she will start to feed herself. Up until now, her mother has been passing on the microorganisms needed to inoculate herself for a life of feeding on poisonous leaves. Young koalas need their mothers until they are about one year old, and some a lot more than others. On the ground, koalas have a sauntering, lolloping gait. But when they need to, these usually ultra-slow animals can really move. Excellent mothers, females are very tolerant of the young, who will pop back into the pouch for milk until they can't fit anymore. Carrying them around on their backs, mother and Joey are very close, and the young Joey will sleep curled up in his mother's lap. Koalas sleep and rest for 20 hours every day, conserving the precious energy they get from the low-nutrient eucalyptus leaves they survive on. Sometimes, though, there is reason to be awake. The first few months out of the pouch is a dangerous time for a young joey. Its mother's strong claws and gripping paws carry them further up a tree and away from danger. As well as guanas, Pythons, wedgetail eagles, and dingoes can all pose a threat to a young koala. From their treetop lookouts, koalas are surrounded by their eucalyptus buffet. But eucalyptus leaves are half water, almost 20% fiber, and 13% tannins. Koalas need to chew through over a kilo a day to keep up even their relaxed lifestyle. When the rains come, koalas don't move out of their trees. They just get wet. Curling into a tiny ball, they huddle inside their waterproof coats. With long, muscular legs and grasping, strong claw digits, koalas are truly excellent climbers. Their forefeet have a split hand design that helps them hold onto tree trunks and branches with a super strong grip. Yet, at the same time, they are so gentle with their young. These adorable, furry, sleepy animals are surely enough to melt anyone's heart. Gentle kangaroos, super furry koalas, delicate butterflies, bright orange clownfish, or cheerful budgies. Which is the cutest of them all? <laughs>